Hey everybody, Chris Pettit here with First 15 Live. Glad to have you on. If you're watching later, feel free to jump ahead to about the 60 second mark um, when we will dive in to our content today. We're talking about one thing you can do that's major key to blessing, major key to blessing. I'm gonna post a link to our group me. It's so important that you get on that group me. It's gonna allow you to get notified. Good morning, Cheryl, glad to have you on here. Danielle, good morning. Be sure to comment whether you're watching live or later. I know I've, I've talked to some of you who watch later, but you don't comment. It would be helpful for you to comment. Um, let's just know that you're on later and engaging with us. So um, you're not just a number to us. You're a person. You're part of the mission, which is to see every believer spend at least 15 minutes with God every day. Penny, Tammy, good morning. Aunt Margaret, good morning. Terry, good morning. Glad to have all of y'all on. Uh, Marshall, good morning. If you haven't shared it, go ahead and hit the share button. Let's try to get 100% share rate both live and later. Shawnee, Amanda Swan, glad to have you on here. Timothy, glad to have you on here. All right, let's dive in. So whether you're watching live or later, please share right now and please comment. That way we know um, who you are and we know uh, or that we're making an impact. Come on. All right, so let's dive in. Um, the verse I've posted already at the top. And so... Um, and also the group me link. I'd love for you to join the group me. That's just a way of getting notified on your phone when we go live. So here's the verse. Um, and I, and I titled this, this, this is one of the greatest things you can do here, um, to be blessed. One of the greatest keys to being blessed. And this verse in Luke chapter 11, uh, verse 28 really coincides. If you're following along in the one, your Bible reading plan, it really coincides along with, um, the, uh, the Old Testament passage that we're reading where he's talking about the rules of the law. And here's what he says in Luke um, 11, 28. But he said, Jesus says to him, on the contrary, blessed are those who hear the word of God and observe it. Who hear it and do it, right? That's that's who's blessed. Jesus said that's who's, who's really going to be blessed. The ones who hear God's word and they do it. And they do it. Mom, good morning. Nika, good morning. Glad to have you all on here. Again, if you haven't shared, hit the share button. So so that's the key. That's the key. And the Old Testament talks about that. If you obey, there's life. There's a blessing. If you disobey, there's a curse. Now, let me start by saying we live uh, under grace, right? So if you make a mistake, it's not like you ruined your blessing. You go back to Christ. He forgives you. Um, it, man, if you if you can go to churchofthehighlands.com and catch... Um, Last night's message from uh, Mekon Carter, just crazy, crazy good, um, talking about how the cross still has the power to save, not just um, the lost people, but Christians, like still has the power to forgive and all of that. Um, Susan, Jill, Pamela, and Elise, God to have all of y'all on board. Um, if you haven't shared, go ahead and share this. Let's get this word out. Anyway, so here's the 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 key, though. So we live in an age of grace, so so... You're not under condemnation. You go Christ, he forgives you. But because of grace, often it is abused and we use the grace of Jesus as a reason to not obey God. And the real uh, key to obeying God is twofold. One, the reasons, the commands God's, God, God gives us are for our good. He's not a tyrant trying to force us to do stuff we don't want to do. He's trying to help us. It's like telling your kid, don't touch that the stove, right? It's hot. You're not doing that because the stove is some awesome fun thing and you want your kid to miss out on it. No, you're trying to help your kid not do something stupid and, and um, not hurt themselves or hurt others. And, and um, in the same way, God's trying to help us not to do stupid things, not to hurt ourselves and not to hurt others. But um, we miss that, don't we? And so obeying the commands is good for us in that sense. And then the other sense is when we when we walk in obedience, and you know this as, as uh, you know, if you've ever been a boss or been over somebody, even as a parent sometimes, when you see that a kid obeys, irregardless of whether they understand why or not, it builds trust. And God wants to build trust with you. And when God builds trust with you, then he's able to bless you more. And so it's a natural flow of blessing. So you get one blessing because you're not doing stupid things to hurt, harm yourself because you're obeying God's word, Right. And the second blessing is God's actually able to give you blessings you don't deserve because he can trust you because you're obeying his word. 
Again, this is not to condemn you. You're not going to hell if you don't obey his word because you've got Christ, right? As long as you're saved, as long as you've asked for forgiveness and you allow, and you take your sins to the Lord and allow him to forgive you, right? Um, he's not looking for perfection, but uh, I should say he's not looking for perfection. He doesn't expect perfection. He knows we're going to mess up, but perfection is still the goal. Not because we want to be holy and, and this, uh, I mean, I, we do want to be holy. What I mean is um, we don't want to be self-righteous. That's not the goal. The goal is to trust God, right? Like his commands are there for my good. And when, when I obey his commands and I obey the word of God, I will be blessed. And so a lot of people run around and they, they oh, I'm not blessed. Why am I going through this? Why am I going through that? You're not obeying his word. For instance, a lot of people complain about finances. I need God to bless me financially. I can't afford to tithe. Well, unfortunately, it's hard for God to bless you when he can't trust you with what you've already got. Come on. So, anyway, a little bit of a long video here, but I want to challenge you with that. Um, if you haven't shared, go ahead and share. Uh, we'll join the group me. The link's there in the comments. I'll post it again here. But that's my challenge to you. Obey God's word. Ask yourself, examine your heart. How much of God's word are you obeying? And uh, let's trust God in every area of our lives and see what happens. Watch how he blesses you. Amen. Michelle praying for your mom. Father, we pray for Michelle's mom, or just for continued healing, God, for continued strength in what she's going through. Lord, I pray for everybody watching this, Lord. Let this not be a message of condemnation, but let it be a message of God's grace and God's glory that helps them, that empowers them to walk out um, the blessing of God in their life through obedience, God. So help us to obey. Help us to follow you. Help us to obey not out of um, condemnation, but let us obey out of trust because we know what you have for us is what's best. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, let's go change the world today. It's easier than you think. Go encourage somebody. Go pray for somebody. Get this word to somebody. That may change their life. You never know. Love you guys. Be blessed. Don't forget to join the group me. We want you to be notified every day when we go live. All right, bye for now, and I'll talk to you tomorrow morning at eight uh, or at um, 6.30. All right, see you then. Bye.